Hi, welcome to IBM Spectrum Protects Operations Center. In this version 815, we've introduced the ability to reclaim space in cloud container storage pools. So for some cloud computing systems, expired or deleted data leaves behind unreferenced data extents in the cloud containers. So this new capability allows you to specify a threshold for reclaiming this occupied but unused space. So let's go ahead and see how this is done. Click Get Started. Go into Storage, and then into the Storage Pool dropdown. You'll see we have different types of disk storage pools, off-premise cloud containers, and directory containers. One thing to note, this is not the reclamation you set up by going into More, and then clicking on Reclaim. That's only for tape devices. In order to set up a cloud reclamation rule, Choose either an on-premise or off-premise S3 or Azure cloud storage pool. Then double-click on that storage pool. Then click on the rules on the left-hand side. Now you see the box that allows you to create a rule for reclaiming cloud containers. Now these rules apply to all the containers in a storage pool. The first thing you want to do is give the rule a name, and the name needs to be unique amongst all storage rules on this Spectrum Protect server. As you can see, it can only be up to 30 characters long. So I'll just reduce that to reclaim space from cloud container. Next, you can choose to have this rule be active or non-active. If it's active, it will automatically kick off. If it's not active, the rule is still there. But in order to kick it off, you will manually have to slide the button over. Next, you'll choose a daily start time. And the start time for reclamation should occur after the data has been backed up or tiered to the cloud. Let's keep the default of 8 p.m. in the evening. Next, you'll choose a maximum run time. And this is going to specify how long the reclamation can run. Remember, when you're running this against an established cloud container pool, it may take a little bit longer to finish because you might have some catch up on the backlog of space available to reclaim. We're going to go ahead and leave it as a default two hours. Next, you'll set the reclaim storage percentage. When the amount of reclaimable space reaches this percentage of a container's capacity, the valid data is going to be written to a new container. And then the storage space that was used by the original container is reclaimed. Because this requires network traffic as well as gets and puts, this operation can result in additional charges from the cloud provider. And I'll talk to you in a minute about how you can estimate that when we look at a cloud container that has data in it. OK, as you can see, you can adjust the different amounts of your reclaimable space and then click Calculate. And I'll show you in a second example on how that impacts these numbers on the right. So let's go ahead and create this rule. If we go to the Command Builder, we can enter the command line Query Storage Rule. And this will show us the different rules we have available out there. This includes one tiering rule and two reclamation rules for cloud containers. If you issue a query storage rule format equals detailed, that will give you additional details about each of the rules. Let's take a look at a storage pool that already has data available to be reclaimed in it. Let's take a look at this container pool that has 1.8 terabytes of use space. When we drill down into that pool and we go to the rules page, here is the rule that's already been set up. And currently this rule for reclamation is inactive. So if we did want it to kick off, we would turn it to active. Notice that the reclamation is currently set at 70%. And if we look at our current pool space, if you remember from the first page, it said this was 1.8 used. But here we can see it's actually 1.9 occupied. And that's because of the unused space that could be reclaimed. When we look at the unused amount in there, this space is the expired or deleted data on the server that's left behind unreferenced data extents in the cloud containers. And this space is occupied but unused. And the pool space after reclamation shows the estimated amount of unused space that will remain after reclamation at the current settings. And so we can see we would get a savings of 61.4 gigabyte, but if we 
be at the cost of network traffic of 15.6 gigabytes of sends and 15.6 gigabytes of receives. And with a cloud metering of 59,723 git requests and 2,071 put requests. So with these numbers, the administrator can do some quick math and figure out their savings per month versus the cost to perform the reclamation. And I gave the quick formula down below. The administrator will need to check with their cloud provider in order to know at what rate they are charged for these different types of activities. If the administrator clicks Modify, you can now change the reclamation threshold. So for instance, if we set it at 75, and then we click Calculate, you can see the numbers on the right change, and thus the savings and cost would change as well. Once the desired reclamation level is set, go ahead and click Save, and this rule has been updated. So in summary, over time as expiration occurs, the dedupe extents without any references are deleted from the Spectrum Protect server. Yet since the cloud objects called containers are immutable, that space is still occupied on the cloud. In order to reduce this footprint of the Spectrum Protect in the cloud, whether it's an on-prem or off-prem cloud container, we can set up a rule for reclamation and then we can read back the extents from the container and write them back to the cloud as smaller, leaner containers with less unused space. Do remember, since reclamation requires network traffic and putting gets to the cloud, this may incur additional charges depending on the cloud provider. And the operation center will help provide information to allow the admin to make informed decisions on what will save the money in the long run. Thank you.